Hey my dear friends, once again welcome back to the channel, I'm Gaurav here and that's the 25th video of this series. And in today's video, we're gonna create a UI system for our game. So let's get started, but before we begin, as I always say, if you are new in the channel, then please check out our previous videos first. Also subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit that bell icon, it's absolutely free. Now first of all, we need to know that what's UI and why do we need it? Well, the UI stands for User Interface and it's a means of interacting and communicating with the computer system such as keyboard, mouse, game control, etc. However, all these are hardware-based interfaces, but what we need here is that a software-based graphical user interface where the player can interact with the game. And it's very important to have a GUI in the game cause it allows us to gather information like how much score we have or how much coins we have collected or how much health we have remaining. Also, we can navigate in the UI system to perform many important tasks such as pausing the game or selecting guns or placing and removing items from the game's inventory. So anything can be on the display where player can interact with like a play button, a volume slider or a hood or some kind of drop down menu, even in screen game controller like a virtual joystick and some buttons with which a player can interact with the game and perform any required task. So now I'm gonna explain how to create a menu system as simple as possible way. And one more thing which is very important to know is that the UI of the game should be easily understandable for our player as the basic purpose of the UI should be enhance the player's experience and easy to operate. Well, if you already have some ideas about your game menu, then feel free to be creative. Otherwise, be with me and let's begin. Now, first of all, I'm gonna create a separate UI canvas for the main menu so that everything looks nice and tidy and, and then I'll name it underscore main menu canvas. Now here, let's take a look at the inspector tab and here we have a component called canvas scaler, which is responsible for scaling up and down the size of the UI canvas. Within that we have a UI scale mode and it's currently set to constant pixel size. Now set its UI scale mode to the scale with screen size so that the UI elements always resize along with the screen size. And that's very important otherwise our UI canvas will behave strangely like um, these UI elements will not resize automatically according to the display size. Then here I would give it a reference resolution and it's up to you. You can give it any desired resolution. So basically this is the screen resolution of our game. Well if you look here under the game tab, here we have a drop down menu right next to the display one which is currently set to free aspects. Now click on it and here it will show us bunch of different different predefined aspect ratios and resolutions. You can choose any of them as per your requirements but if you don't see any specific aspect ratio or resolution that you want for your game then in that case you can create one as per your need by just clicking on that little plus icon. And then here we can set our required screen resolution or aspect ratio. So here in the label we will give a name to the resolution like I'll name it after my phone M51. And, and then here we have a type. Here you can choose either of these two aspect ratio or a fixed resolution. So let's say if you want to go with the aspect ratio then here and the width and height you have to fill your required aspects like for me is 20 ratio 9 or choose the fixed resolution if you want exact pinpoint resolution for your game and give it your required height and width for me is 2400 by 1080 pixels and then click on the ok button and save it so in this way you can create your required screen resolution or expect ratio now back to our canvas and here on the reference resolution I'll set 2400 pixels to X and 1080 pixels to the Y same as our screen resolution and set match to height or width or somewhere in between 0 and 1 as per your requirements but for me I'll set it to 1 and then the next step here within the main menu canvas I'll create a UI image and I'll name it underscore backdrop and then select the predefined tracked anger preset to stretch it across the canvas. And here I'm gonna select the one that's on the bottom right corner, press the alt button and then click on it. After that I'll change its color to the black and you can give it any color as per your taste. 
but now those health bars are bugging me a lot because nobody would want to see hanging them on the main menu system isn't it so therefore to fix this i have two options now the first way is to leave them inactive initially and then activate them later by clicking on the play button we can activate them by using script or on click function um, which is present on the button component and we will talk about it later on in this video and the second way is that to leave it active but hide it behind the main menu canvas so i'll take second approach to make things simple as possible now let's quickly rename it to the health canvas now click on the main menu canvas and here on the inspector tab we have a component called canvas and there is a short order which is currently set to zero and now again if we go back to the health canvas and there also a short order and it's also set to zero so we have a short order on both of our canvases which is set to zero now click on the main menu canvas and look what happened if I increase the value. We see that the health canvas is no longer visible anymore even though it's still active. Note that for a canvas or any UI element which you wanna be visible on top of everything else, it must have higher sort order number in order to render first. In simple words, the sort order number determines which UI element will render above or below of other UI elements. For example, assume that it's a pages stacked on top of the other and the sort order number is the index number of these pages. So in order to render main menu canvas on top of the health canvas, then its order number must always be higher than the health canvas's order number. So I'll set it to 1 and that'll fix it. And the next step, let's give a name to our game and to do this here I'll add a UI text element under the backdrop to give a name as a title and I'll name it game name. Now here give your game an awesome name, um, for now I'll just name it prototype and then increase its rect and font size and then I'll make it bold and italian then make it center. And now let's change its color and I'll color it to blue and from here you can change its font style but if you don't know how to change its font then no worries soon i'll make a dedicated video about it but for now i'll give its unity documentation link down there in the description box and you should definitely consider to take a look at it it'll be helpful okay for now i'm not gonna be changing its font uh, to keep our project simplicity and and otherwise the video will be longer than usual so right now i just duplicate it and change its color to white and then and then move it a little bit up and a little bit to the right and it looks fine so right click on the main menu canvas and then move cursor on the ui then click on button and i'll name it underscore play button and increase its size a bit and move it down now take a look inside the button and here we have a text type game object and on the inspector tab we have a text box so give a name to your button which is play because we are creating a play button of course and increase its size now click on the play button and here on the inspector tab we have a button component and it has a bunch of color palettes and other settings like interactive, translation, normal color, highlighted color and so on. But for now we are not going to go deep in there but soon I'll cover it in the separate video. Otherwise for now I'm giving its unity documentation link down there in the description box and you can take a look at it for better understanding. Okay so for now I'm only interested on the normal color and the highlighted color. Now normal color refers to a neutral position or you can say um, an ideal stage for a button. So whenever the button is in its normal state then its color will be this normal color. And the highlighted color is for when our cursor is on top of the button. Like if I hover mouse over it then its color will change to this highlighted color. Now I'm giving a dark blue color for the normal color and a light blue for the highlighted color. But now the play button looks too dull and boring. So let's bump it up and change its color to the bright white and make it bold. Awesome, now it looks good. And the rest three color palettes are gonna remain in their default color. Now save it and let's see how it behaves. 
You see whenever I hover mouse over the button then it gradually changes its color and it looks so nice isn't it? Of course it's not gonna do anything right now cause we haven't gave any functionality to it. Now to make it work let's create a simple script for the menu system and name it main menu. Now double click on it to open it. First of all let's get rid of the start and update function as we don't need them for now. Instead we will use the wake function and there I would write time dot time scale equals zero. Well it's a unit is built in function and it's responsible for manipulating game's time scale. So basically you can control the time in the game by using time dot time scale function. Like you can increase or decrease the speed of the game's animation and also you can freeze the whole game by setting time scale to the zero. Well I've given its unity documentation link down there in the description box and you should definitely consider to check this out for a better clarification. Now here let's create a public function and name it play button. I'm setting it to public so that I can call it from the inspector tab and in it I'll copy that same line here but this time I'll set it to 1. Well I'm setting it to 1 so that whenever we will press the play button then our game will start at normal time speed. So if it's a 0 then the game will pause or if it's set to 1 then it'll start or resume the game. But there is some limitations such as update loop. Well, the update loop called all the time even if the game's time scale is set to zero means functions within the update loop will always run normally. However, time based functions such as time.delta time, wait for seconds, invoke, or any animations will not gonna run. So, it's just a basic understanding of time.time scale. So let's continue our project and here I will create two more public functions one for pause button and one for resume button public void pause button and in this I'll write time dot time scale and I'll set it to zero and then I'll create another function to resume the game and I'll name it resume button and here I'll write time dot time scale and I'll set it to one now save it and go back to the unity now add the script on the UI game object then on the play button you will see here we have something called on click function under the button component so it's an event handler which triggered whenever we click on the button okay let me explain it assume that you've created some functions in a script uh, which you want to get executed whenever you click on the button uh, in our case it's a play button so whenever we press on the play button then we want our game to start and that's what we are going to do to create a play button for now currently it's empty so let's add some functionalities if you look down here we have these plus and minus icons the plus icon is for adding events and the minus is for removing events from the on click handler now click on the plus icon and here we've got an empty slot so this is where we'll add the script and to get the main menu script just simply drag the ui game object in there and then here select the play button function from the list now one more thing we also have to disable the main menu canvas as well uh, so that we can see our game so once again click on the plus icon and this time we'll add main menu canvas in there and then we'll select game object and then here we have a function called set active bool so click on it and that's all we have to do now save it and press the play button and let's see is everything working fine or not and it looks awesome but if you are still confused and want to know more about it then I've already given its unity documentation link down there in the description box. So we created our main menu user interface. Well, for now, that's all in this video. And in the next video, we'll create pause menu UI. So till then, keep learning, keep practicing, and I'll meet you in the further upcoming videos. For now, see ya later.